Hello and welcome to Robin Minds. My name is Hiro Daniels, and I am standing in for Ebuka Obi Uchendu, who quite unfortunately is under the weather, but of course he sends his love and we cannot wait to have him back. Happy Mother's Day to all of our lovely mothers all over the world. Thank you so much for all you do. It is often said that there is no love stronger than the love of a mother. So thank you so much. Thank you for the care and thank you for everything. Let's get straight into the topic. Yes, we know that we live in a world that has rapidly changed because of the pandemic. And this has cost a lot of businesses. This has cost individuals and things are no longer the same. The lockdown has been lifted. Uh, so far, so good. People are trying as much as possible to comply, even though that we've seen videos online of people not necessarily complying to the directives given by the NCDC. Uh, notwithstanding, uh, businesses have resumed. Some businesses have still not resumed because of the lockdown has not allowed them to resume. And this has had like huge economic implication um, in Nigeria. And that leads me to the discourse for today which is COVID-19, how can we diversify the economy? You would agree with me that this is something we've been talking about for many years now, but it has become very pertinent to have this conversation again because the global oil price has crashed and the future is looking really bleak if we are to depend solely on oil. To discuss with me today, I have an economist. He is Gospel Obele. And he'll be joining me very shortly uh, via Skype interview. While we're waiting for Gospel Obele, it is also very important that we talk about how much this lockdown has affected us as individuals. We've had cases where people are having a bit of because of claustrophobia, a lot of people cannot necessarily, you know, go out there and function properly. You know, personally, I, for one, I have been working from home. I have been staying safe and I've been contributing my own little quota in making sure that I flatten the curve. All right. But driving down today, I noticed that the streets were literally empty. You know, the world we once knew has rapidly changed. But the big question now is how can we adapt? How can we make sure that, you know, we, our businesses keep running? And that is why we're having Gospel Obebe. Gospel Obele, I hope he's ready right now. We're connecting with him. Hello, Mr. Obele. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. Hi. Can you hear me? Good yes, I can hear oh, you many thanks for joining us. So let's get straight into it. Um, we are aware of the current economic realities of this country as a result of the pandemic. What, chance, what chances are there? Uh, so um, it hits globally everywhere. Um, Nigeria is not exempted. Uh, we discover that the challenge, in as much as it's a global situation, um, countries are now trying to respond um, in the best context fit uh, way that they can. But however, it has also hampered deeply on, on the economics or the economy, the Nigerian economy, so to speak. And uh, because various countries are on different, that various countries are on different um, 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 rungs of the ladder in terms of development, then it means that our outcomes, you know, would be different how, on how it shifts the economy and the business environment, basically. The question now is, where do we go from here? How do you think we can handle the situation currently? So basically, it's, um, it's important that we understand that the economy has been badly hit, business environment has been badly hit, jobs have been badly hit. And what that simply means in the technical terms is that we are already in a recession. So we do not have to wait for the regular six-month calendar or the two-quarter negative growth to show us through the numbers that we are in a recession. Even I have projected um, that the, 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 Nigerian, the Nigerian economy will slide into a recession. So what that means for us is that it's important that we begin to think of how we can recover and then help the, people, the Nigerian people, uh, public finances, you know, generally as, 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 as an economy and as a people, recover from this whole experience. So waiting for six months or two quarters of negative GDP growth to confirm we are in a recession is a reactive approach to managing the crisis. So there is need for us to rethink our processes 
SMEs will need to think of not just passion, but clarity, intelligence, and flexibility in engaging the sector that will thrive on post-COVID. So it's important that every economic agent, be it household, consumers, and the government, think of recovery you know, um, at this critical time of our national history. Okay, so speaking of these sectors that we need to pay more attention to, um, the government has been talking about the diversification of the economy for the longest time, and the governments after governments, they keep on talking about the same thing. So uh, how do you think, uh, how can you measure the government's efforts in actually diversifying um, the economy? So first and foremost, it's important to note that uh, the subject of diversification has been misunderstood. Um, the economy as it stands now is to a very fair extent diversified. You know, it's diversified based on the rebate GDP numbers and all that. We find that the oil sector now contributes just 8% of the GDP, uh, of GDP, and agriculture, manufacturing, and industry basically uh, contributes about 92% of the Nigerian GDP. So on a fair basis, on, in terms of formal computation, the economy is already diversified. Now, when you look at it on a wider perspective, based on formal and informal economy, it's largely diversified. The challenge we have is that we've not been able to properly coordinate the diversification efforts so that we can see the impact on unemployment numbers, we can see the impact on government revenue. So we've not also diversified our revenue base, that's what I'm trying to say. And then second, we've not created the right enablers to scale um, the current diversification uh, that we have at the moment. So there is need to to coordinate these efforts properly. And being the fact that the Nigerian economy is 60% informal, that will tell you that a lot of, in court, diversification process is lost off the record because we cannot simply uh, uh, account for you know, other sectors. So, for example, you have services. Services that makes up close to 50% of the Nigerian GDP. So, we are fairly diversified. We need to begin to think of how do we structure our diversification into the formal pool and how do we expand it in terms of scaling. And to expand it, we are talking about um, diversification enablers, you know, like infrastructure, like political will, like in institutional capacity, like policy consistencies, and all of those things. How do we use policies and the collection of these tools, right? to improve and scale diversification, especially to solve our social problems and uh, to improve government revenue. Fantastic. So basically you're saying that um, we need to go back to the drawing board because apparently the plan that we have on ground is not necessarily working and it needs a lot of improvements. Yes, that's part of it. So, I, I, and going back to the drawing board, that would mean how do we scale, how do we first of all coordinate what we have into the formal space, and how do we create the right enablers, the right drivers to scale them, you know, uh, to solve our social problems and even create revenue for the government. So how do we do what we, what we are currently, what we currently have? You know, we have so much running that we do not know. So how do we, how do we coordinate and how do we scale the current diversification we have? All right. Um, let's talk about small businesses, uh, the small and medium scale businesses. Um, a lot of businesses have been affected because of, you know, the lockdown and the, the economic implications that the COVID-19 has presented. Uh, how, what is the way forward for small businesses to scale through in this time of pandemic? So in this time of pandemic, it's very critical that small businesses must understand that passion or whatsoever led them into doing business in the first instance would not see them through. So there is need for clarity and there is need for intelligence. Clarity, intelligence are a form of flexibility. I mean, what the Harvard Business School will call discovery-driven planning. So it's important for SMEs to step back and take it and, and review the whole scenario. And how does this post-COVID, how does COVID-19 influence or shape their current business models? How does it shape their business processes? How, how has it influenced the sectors in which they play, they play in? So there was need for that business review. Secondly, a lot of SMEs will either need to switch businesses or begin to plan in terms of scenarios. So in engaging scenario planning, how do I move from point A to point B? Knowing fully well the effects of COVID-19 on my sector and on my business and my target markets. They also need to understand, this is the period where SMEs need to understand markets more critically. Not just SMEs, even big, big business and conglomerates. So it's important to do a detailed business review, 
planning scenarios, what we call discovery driven planning, right? And then review markets as you go, right? Think of other sectors of complementary products and services that can be adopted that can be adopted this period. So SMEs need to think more short term than mid term in terms of scenario planning than just trying to do business as usual. Because it's also very possible that even potentially um, cap SMEs who have the potential to scale through this period may fail because they are unable to engage the intellectual rigor of the how in terms of accessing markets and reviewing their business to adopt properly. All right. Uh, we've seen a rise in technology and we see a lot of individuals and businesses leveraging uh, technology to move their brand to the next level. How important is leveraging technology in times like this? Now, the technology sits at the center of almost everything we do now. It sits at the center of almost everything we do now. Apparently, COVID-19 revealed to us that we are not ready. You know, and then uh, a lot of things also went down the line because we were really ready to uh, adopt to it. So there, there was this, you know, rush into the use of technology. So technology now is very critical for businesses to adopt um, um, tech. And then how can businesses leverage digital tools or tech tools to amplify or improve the work that they're currently doing? So social distancing also comes, uh, also brings its own cost, attracts its own cost in terms of doing business. So technology, um, businesses will have to think of how to engage technology more smartly, you know, especially on the revenue lines, especially on the revenue lines. So how can we use technology and online platforms to grow revenue, to grow sales, to engage customers and to interact more intelligently? So it sits at the core of almost every business now in every sector. So it's important going forward. It can never be oversized. All oh, right, uh, Gospel, that is really, really mind opening. And I'm sure that a lot of business owners are really grateful um, for all of your, for, for your wealth of knowledge. Um, still talking about SMEs, uh, what do you think government can actually do to uh, shield a lot of businesses from the impacts of this pandemic? So, first of all, stimulus is what we have at the moment. I will start from the moment. What we have at the moment are stimuluses. So, there are a lot of stimuluses and credit facilities that have been created to support SMEs at these critical times, right? But then, how do you support SMEs who have not done a detailed review of the business process and how it shifts? how COVID-19 has come to um, impact on their businesses. So I think government has to uh, uh, begin to help businesses, you know, engage that critical review. So it's, it's not just enough to tell businesses how to thrive on post-COVID or provide stimulus or credit facilities. No, you need to support SMEs to help them understand the impact of, of COVID-19 on their businesses and on their sectors and their markets. You know, SMEs cannot engage that intellectual rigor. So government has to enable or help them or assist them technically so that after weighing, determining what the risks are, the stimulus can come in as a cushion uh, package and the likes. And then the idea of trying to introduce credit facility may not be sustainable because businesses right now are thinking of survival and how to latch on new cluster opportunities in other sectors. So they may not be able to pay back, with, um, pay back loan or credit facilities. So it's necessary that our plan or our strategy to engage SMEs from the government handle has to be more technically driven, has to be sustainable and holistic. Okay. Uh, now, over the course of the week, um, mo the, the news that was trending uh, is uh, the news of a lot of job losses. Um, even big companies are cutting down on their staff. Um, of course, there's a particular you know, um, financial institution that had to you know, let go of some of their staff. And a lot of people are worried. Uh, so how can we avoid people losing their jobs this time? Also mentioned again that COVID-19 only revealed or rather amplified the management inefficiencies and excesses we have in the Nigerian economy slash the private sector. So it's, it's not new that those challenges are formally there. COVID-19 only amplified and showed us what the excesses are. So because we're in a stage of survival now and many businesses just have to survive and we're no, we no longer in business as usual, it makes sense to cut you know, um, costs by reducing or, or laying off staff. Now for individuals, individuals they will have to think of other thriving sectors or thriving opportunities slash the digital advantage in these sectors, you know, maximize all of these things to find what the new normal will look like for them. 
Secondly, government will have to really think of stimulus packages. Now, for example, if we are to introduce stimulus packages for those who have been laid off, do we even have any data facility or any intelligence gathering that shows that these are the number of individuals that are losing their jobs on a daily basis, especially those in the informal sector or especially those in SMEs or uh, those Hey, Gospel, thank you so very much uh, for joining us. Um, thank you for your contribution. Oh.